All right, and we here we have Leah from Los Angeles, California. Leah, um, as we met a little bit ago, from here here in uh, the border of Jama, Chile and Argentina border. I understand you're riding a bicycle for was it 18 months now? 18 months. Um, with how did you come about with about this trip? Mm, I would say it's been my dream for about 10 years. <laughs> I drove everyone in my life crazy talking about this trip, and then I finally realized it would never be the right time. I'd never have enough money, so I just yeah. did it. <laughs> awesome. So you you entered. What, Mexico from, from California? Tijuana. You went through Tijuana <laughs> and you crossed the whole country of Mexico. I rode in Mexico for five and a half months. Five and a half months Mexico. all over Mexico. Wow, that's awesome. Um, and then you went into Gua Guatemala, obviously, right? Guatemala, and then El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, and then I took a boat from... Wait a minute, all this on a bicycle? All <laughs> Mexico and Central America on a bicycle. Uh, on the bike, I think right there. <laughs> on that bike right there. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. I, I guess obviously, um, um, what about, I mean, do you work on the road? Or, or, I mean, how do you, you have sponsors that are taking care of your trip? Or how, how are you doing this? I don't have sponsors. And I have admittedly run out of money a few times. Okay. <laughs> generous people out there who read my blog and follow my blog and appreciate I see. my writing and um, I have stopped to, to teach English in cities and Okay, so part of your finances come from a blog that you have. Yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. And I, I saved for years and years and years. Yeah. Oh, you saved money for several years? Mm, about 10 years. I see. <laughs> now, let me ask you something. I mean, us as Americans, you know, we think about it a lot about uh, security issues and safety and because of course everything outside the borders of the United States it's it's dangerous so to speak I mean what do you want what would you like to say to people who kind of have a little bit of fear of, of safety issues of maybe they want to do a trip like this whether on a bicycle a motorcycle a car but maybe a little concerned about safety what, what would you like to, to touch I, on, on that a little bit my, my family was planning my funeral <laughs> <laughs> I told them, I've okay. never seen my father cry in my entire life, and my father was crying, and I, I was just so busy reassuring everyone else not to be worried that I forgot to be worried, and I just kind of went with an open mind, and my instincts, and my wits, and it's been an amazing experience. In, in 12 countries, strangers have opened their doors to me, fed me dinner, and I felt like family in every country. Would you expect the same kind of treatment in the U.S. if you're doing this trip like this? I, I would hope. <laughs> I see. But I, I feel like it's maybe a little bit more closed off. It's, it's okay. Have you done any traveling on a bicycle in the U.S. at all? No. This is my first trip. This is your first trip ever? <laughs> yeah. You've never taken short trips, weekend trips, week, week long no. trips? I would just ride to work in New York. And I see. I was not a how did the idea come about of traveling like this? I just wanted to get to know places that weren't in guidebooks, that didn't have hotels, that buses didn't go to, just the small places that no one's ever heard of. Those, those have been my favorite places. Awesome. Like, great. That's, that's great. <laughs> that's great. Now, let me ask you, um, what would you... How, how would somebody that want, want to do a trip like this, I mean, what kind of preparation would you recommend them to have? What, what, what do you need to do? I mean, what did you do? You probably had an apartment or a house, a car, a job. <laughs> how did you handle all these things before you went on the trip? I, I sold everything. I, I got rid of everything. It, it, it was a huge leap. I mean, you, you didn't put things out in storage, in a big storage unit? No. Or, you got rid of just I about just, everything. Yeah, I really wanted to just go. I, I didn't think I would make it past Mexico. I had no idea how far I'd make it. I was really careful to say what, what my end goal would be. I just wanted to ride as far as I could while I still loved it. And I, awesome. I'm just going to keep riding until I don't love it anymore. And 
I love it more and more the harder it gets. So. Now, <laughs> what, what would you say you know, to, to like encourage people that would want to do a trip like this uh, that are kind of like maybe sitting on the fence because of maybe their finances or maybe because of fear or because of their family is, is fearful for their life. Like you said, your parents were planning your funeral. It's kind of funny. <laughs> I mean, what, would you, what would you say? Just maybe in a few sentences, what would you tell them? I would say not to listen to Fox News. <laughs> you know, Turn off the television. If you hear stories, they're usually hearsay or you know, secondhand information. And I think that mostly the world is a really good safe place that you can trust. Now obviously there are some safety issues because I mean I, don't, I wouldn't expect you to be driving anywhere at any time. Right. Um, what, what, I, I do, I, I lie on the road. When people ask me if I'm alone, I always say that my friends are ahead or my boyfriend's ahead. I see. But although you're traveling completely by yourself and you've been doing it for 18 months. Well, when I stay with families then I, I tell them and they know what I'm doing but no one believes me. I tell them <laughs> from the bike alone and then a few hours later they say, oh, so you flew here in an airplane? No, I rode my bike. <laughs> but I think that most of the time people think I just don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah, and how much longer are you planning on traveling? Um, hoping to make it to Ushuaia. Ushuaia. So four months, I think, five months. The one thing that I've really learned is when you're happy, you, you don't need much. I sleep in a tent, I cook on a beer can stove. And, um, a what? I'm sorry, did I hear that right? A beer can stove. A I beer make, can stove. With alcohol. I see. Yeah, I cook pasta, rice, soup, everything. And you can't most, most of the way, is yeah. what you say. Yeah. That is. In people's gardens or just sometimes in the middle of nowhere in the desert. I always hit them from the road, but, but yeah. You, yeah. And obviously, your family are aware of the way you're where you're staying, and and they're still concerned about you, or they're pretty much they're used to so it now. They're so excited and supportive, and they, yeah, they're they love it. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> they're always like, keep going. You know, when something bad happens, they're like, keep going. That's that's awesome. And they, I think, they it's really changed their minds. Even like grandparents, like people that were so stuck in their ways and thought they knew everything about the world. And, Real quick, what has changed your view about about well, the traveling other countries? Have, have you have a different view I think now? A common misperception is that people in the U.S. like we think that everyone hates us, and once you get out, most people are just living their life and they're really curious about the U.S. And in 12 countries, not one person has said anything bad about the U.S. And people are just curious; they want to know what it's like. And, no one has ever been hostile to me. Just really open, welcoming, patient awesome, people. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's great news, Leah. I really, really appreciate your time. I wish you great travels, and maybe we'll meet up sometime on the road. Ah, thank you. Huh? Thanks a lot. <laughs>